Jacob had said, I will not let you go until except you bless me. But he had something to do before that blessing. Genesis chapter 32 verse 27. And he said unto him, What is thy name? What is thy name? Why that kind of question? When he wanted to get blessing by a crafty method. And he went to his father Isaac. And Isaac said, My son, you want the blessing. What is your name? And Jacob said, I am Esau, your son. And he, and he stole the blessing by telling a lie. I am Esau, your firstborn son. Come near here. To feel his hand. He has stolen the skin of a goat to cover up. Come on, let me embrace you. He has stolen the garment of Esau so that the smell will be like this is Esau. And the angel from heaven said, What's your name? If you keep the stolen blessing, the stolen identity, if you keep what you got by craft, by scheming, by deception, by lying, the transformation you are looking for will just be eluding you. And so the angel said, Tell me now, like you told your father, what's your name? And he said, Jacob. From within his heart, with all sincerity, with all honesty, he made a true confession. He dropped the lie of the old lie. The old man is a deceiver. The natural man is a deceiver. We're deceived by appearance. We're deceived by animal skin on the hand. We're deceived by a deceptive voice from him. But now to have the blessing of transformation from heaven. We drop all the lies of the past. All the deception of the past. That's what is called repentance. He turned around. He dropped the wrong deceptive identity. When you come to the Lord and you want the transformation from heaven, a change of heart, a change of life, a change of character, a change in your health situation, a change in everything around you and within you. You drop the past and then you take up the new. He said, I am Jacob. The Lord is touching your life tonight. The Lord is turning you around tonight. All deception in action. 
All deception in attitude. All deception by vocalizing that lie. All deception by quietly smiling. You don't talk, but you smile. But you nod. You are saying yes by your action. When it is no, in reality, when you want the blessing of the Lord, that's a practical, in depth repentance for you to have that true transformation. Acts chapter 5, reading here from verse 30. Acts chapter 5, verse 30. The God of our fathers raised up Jesus, whom ye slew and hanged on a tree. Verse 31. Him as God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior. He wants to be the prince in your life. The king of your life. The lord of your life. He wants to be your savior. Tonight he'll be your savior. He'll forgive all your sins. He cleanse all your sins. He will save you. From the penalty of hell. The soul that sinners, it shall die. Will be separated forever and ever from the God of heaven. The penalty of sin is hell. And as you want a change. From the penalty of hell to the provision of heaven. Christ becomes the prince, the lord, the king, and the savior. For to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. That's what he's telling you now. And he gives you genuine and true repentance. And then no lies anymore. No deception anymore. In Acts chapter 17. Reading from Vastachi. Acts chapter 17. Vastachi. At the times of this ignorance, God winked at. Jacob was ignorant of the method of getting blessing. He thought, I don't have to wait for God. I don't have to allow him to fulfill the prophecy that had been given to my mother before I was born. I'll do it myself. I'll take it myself. I will use fleshly method, human method. I've had other people do it like that. And I am going to get it by my effort. He realized later he couldn't get that salvation by his own effort. He couldn't get the divine touch by his own effort. He couldn't get the fulfillment of the prophecy by his own fleshly canal method. He was ignorant of the ways of the Lord. At this time of repentance, the times of this ignorance, God winked at. 
but now commandest all men everywhere to repent. Now God commands all men from the time of Genesis unto this time everywhere to repent. That divine touch will come through repentance. That transformation will come through repentance. The forgiveness will come through repentance. The salvation will come through repentance. The faith will be activated and the faith will work through repentance. Look at verse 31. In verse 31, because he has appointed a day in the which he will judge the world in righteousness. Jacob did not realize that everything that had been happening to him was judgment. The Lord that promised him at Bethel. The place where you lie, I will give it unto you. I will take you to where you are going and bring you back. I will be with you. I will not leave you until I have done everything I promised you. And so, Jacob went with that promise. He got to Laban. And when he got to his house, they made a deal, first of all, on who to marry. He was deceived like he deceived his father. What he sowed, he was sleeping. He never realized it was judgment. And then, okay, bargain. I'll pay you this, you do that. Laban changed in a few days. Another, okay, let's make a new deal. Ten times over. He was deceived. The wages were changed. The Lord was telling him, God will judge sin. But he did not understand. And was going on and on. Every day he was getting nearer to the final judgment. Until this decisive time of repentance. And the Lord is telling us that judgment is not only in the world, it's in the world beyond. The things that have been happening. No, it's not Laban. It's judgment. It's not the sheep, the goats, and the cattle. It's judgment. And the Lord was trying to call him to attention. And the Lord is calling you to attention tonight. So that you will not meet the final judgment on that appointed day. In which you will judge men by the man whom he has ordained. Whereof he has given assurance unto all men in that he has raised him from the dead. Christ died. Why? To bear your sin. He was buried. But he didn't remain there beyond three days. On that third day, he rose again. 
so that he can now present to you salvation and now by his stripes you are healed you are blessed you are turned around a new life now comes to you because he died he was buried and he rose again the Lord now wants you to believe in him and to understand that the divine touch comes because of him the divine transformation comes because of him the change of life the change of destiny comes because of him tonight it will turn your life around it will change your destiny as you repent as you turn to the lord as you believe on the lord that divine transformation of destiny will come to you in jesus name we're coming to point number three now personal incredible restoration